Hello and welcome. It's Sarah Stovetop coming to you live from my kitchen. Thought I'd try a different view here. And um, so welcome. It's episode 158 and we are um, making some pad thai, but we're going to, instead of using noodles, we are going to use some uh, butternut squash as our noodles and we're going to spiralize them. So I just wanted to show you really quickly, this once was a butternut squash, the whole thing. I took off the neck, which is the part that you can spiralize. Remember inside the bottom part is a bunch of seeds. So it's hollow and so it won't turn in the spiralizer. So that's why I did this and tomorrow, or maybe later tonight, maybe even, I'm gonna make some butternut squash soup with this. So I'm gonna put that aside because we don't need that. And I wanna show you how to use my spiralizer. But before I do that, I just wanted to welcome our re 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 ugh, replay viewers. And anybody who's watching me live, feel free to comment and let me know. I am actually gonna turn off the banner so it's, the ticker's not going on. But um, feel free to comment and let me know that you're here. I see Facebook user and she says, he or she says excited. So this is what it looks like to me because I'm on StreamYard, so I can't tell who you are. So my suggestion is go to StreamYard.com and let me pull that up for you so you can see and slash Facebook. And that way um, you can give, give them permission to use your name because it's a Facebook uh, privacy thing. So um, Facebook doesn't want to let them use your name unless you agree to it, which is okay. So please go and do that. If you choose not to do that, no big deal. But when you comment, please tell me your name. So type in, you know, you're excited and what your name is so I can address you. I mean, I, it's, it's much better to talk to someone, you know, based on <laughs> what, what they are, what, what their name is. Like, for example, this person says has is Janet and she says hello hello Janet we're glad to see you here's my friend Vicky tuning in to say hi um, and here's a, we have someone that is a um, YouTube watcher so we've got I, I can broadcast both on Facebook and on YouTube oh Hobbs is ready for his entry so here's Hobbs come on Hobbs Hobbsy come come here good boy are you in? There you are. Okay, let's give you a biscuit. There you go. Good fella. That's a good boy. Oh, you dropped a little bit. <laughs> All right. Did you guys see that? He's so cute. He's old. He's 13. He'll be 14 in no, uh, February. So he's an old guy. Okay, let's take you off, Mitch. Whoops, sorry. Um, and we're going to take off that banner also because we don't need that constantly, but let's see what else. Um, someone signed, signed up for StreamYard. Oh, and must be acting up. Oh, I'm sorry, Margaret. Um, if, if, thank you for letting me know who's on here. <laughs> I'm sorry that it's not, um, it's not telling you who you are. Just, you, just type in Margaret or Peggy, whatever works for you. Um, <laughs> and uh, Mitch said that Hobbs was snoozing and that's why he didn't come in right away. <laughs> He's very funny. Okay, so let's get cooking. Um, we're gonna make a pod thai. I'm sort of using two different recipes in my mind. Um, we have one that ha that uses, um, uh, what is it? Uh, sweet potatoes, but I didn't have any, so I had the squash, so I'm using the squash. And um, we have a, a little ebook that comes with, that I send to people who get our spiralizer which is really nice. I had it bound and everything, but you don't have to, obviously it's an ebook and it's a veggie spiralizer. And what's nice about this ebook is it goes through and it tells you all the produce and what's the best noodle to make from it. Cause you know, a spiralizer takes your vegetables and it makes a noodle out of it. So you've heard of zoodles, same concept. So, but you can do it with so much more. I love it for beets and you can do like a really thin spaghetti noodle for beets and you can like compose a little salad with it. It's very pretty because beets can come in, you know, red or yellow or kind of an orange or golden color. Um, the squash, the butternut squash, they're actually recommending doing it uh, on the ribbon, but I honestly, I'm gonna do the, uh, well not honestly, literally, I am not going to use the ribbon, I am going to use the, um, 
uh, linguine set, the squash, the linguine um, uh, setting. So, and you can do carrots, celery roots, rutabagas, sweet potatoes, parsnips, kohlrabi, turnips, uh, and then the yellow and zucchini squash are some of the things that they're suggesting. And they give you also how to cook them, like how to microwave them or, of, you know, which is the best method for each one. Um, and then this is what I'm going to be using today. There's like a bunch of sauces. I think there's like six sauces, one, two, three, four, five sauces, five sauces that they're suggesting. And I'm going to use the pad thai sauce. And so let's get making the sauce. And uh, let's first let's let's do the uh, noodles, and then we'll make the sauce. And um, I'm gonna cook it um, in the um, stainless steel nonstick wok. And that is the host special uh, next month for sure at 60% off. But you can get it this month at 60% off. So if you want to host, it's a great time to get that at a really good discount. So let's turn the camera down so I can show you. Oh, good, you can see it. Um, so this is the spiralizer. It's different than most spiralizers because it uses, um, it's, it's vertical. So you can use some pressure a little bit on it, um, as opposed to when you're doing horizontal, it's really hard to push and pull the, the, the other, some of the other ones are crazy like that, um, and hard to use. It has three blades. It has a fixed blade, which you may be able to see. Um, fixed blade in here that is makes the ribbons. See this very, very um, big spike? That's what you put the food on. But before we can do that, we have to put the other blade on. So the way to do that, it's really easy to take apart to clean, by the way. The, um, there's a, a th thing that protects the big spike from your hands. And it ho also has a holder for our little, um, our, our other, uh, blades. So this is the linguine side and you can see it's, it's, uh, you know, like a quarter of an inch. And then the other side is the spaghetti side and see how thin those slices would, those, um, noodles would be very thin. So we're going to take this and we're going to use it. There's a guide on this side and for a little slot, we're going to put it with the linguine side up, stick it in there. And then there's a thumb screw. And all I'm doing is turning that screw to, so that it holds this in place. So when it's firmly in place, like I can't pull it or push it or raise it up and down, you want to be able to be firm. Then I can take this off and save that for another time. Okay. All right. So we got that. Then we're going to take our uh, bulb of the bulb or the neck end, sorry, of and I peeled it also of the butternut squash and I want to center it over the um, spike. Now there are circles in here to kind of give you an idea as a guide of how big or small it is. Um, so you want to put that in there. And if you have something that is wider at one end than the other, then you want ideally to put the wider end up because here's the other side, the food holder right here. And it's that way you can press into it and it'll, move the food for you. Okay, so now we're ready to turn. And there's a kind of a shiny side and that's where the food will come out. So I'm gonna back this up a little bit so you can see. And so it should start coming out this side right here. So you should start seeing it come out. And see how quickly it spiralizes? You definitely wanna hold on to it because it can be a little jiggly once and here we go, all those, all that butternut squash. And you know it would take a long time to like grate this by hand, but it really does it so quickly. And eventually it will be done. <laughs> There's a lot on there, wow. Okay. And you know, if you find that it's like, like right now it's a little loose feeling like this. So then that's when you can press down on it a little bit. That's where the, uh, the fact that it's vertical comes in really handy. Oh, and by the way, look at how long these noodles are. So we're going to have to cut those with a knife. Let me finish this up very quickly. And you can see how quickly it goes. I mean, I think that was like a minute. And once you can't press down on it anymore, the two spikes are going to come together, the food holder and the center spike. 
and you're not going to be able to get any more out of it. So it's going to leave like, there we go. It's going to leave like, you can probably see in here that there's maybe a um, quarter of an inch to a half an inch piece that just won't, it won't spiralize any further. So let me take this up and I'll take it off and show you and see. It's a little bit. And then I'm going to use that in my soup tomorrow. So I'll put that over with the other one. And let's see. Just so you can see what, oh, there's a little bit left over there. And the base comes off, and this helps to make it easy to clean. Um, it's got a non-skid surface. This is like silicone so that it won't go across your counter. Um, there are, where are the little, okay, right here you see this arrow. And there's an, also an arrow on the base. And that, oops, oh yeah, there we are. <laughs> and that arrow lines up with this arrow. And that's how you know how to put it back together. So in order to clean it, I'm just gonna undo this blade. This can all go in my dishwasher. What I generally do though, and I'm gonna disengage this, is I will, and oh, and this part comes off too. Sorry, I forgot to show you. You can undo the food holder, two parts. Put that in your dishwasher as well. And then this can go in the dishwasher also. I generally take a, um, a brush, a clean, you know, a, a, either a toothbrush or your, um, uh, whatchamacallit, your, your food brush for, um, for uh, washing dishes. And I just scrape it out in there just to make sure that nothing's caught. So there you have it. That is how to spiralize. And I, I'm, you know, I forget about this sometimes, but tonight I was like, wow, I need to do that. So let me put this in my sink so it's out of the way. All right, so that's a lot of noodles, right? Those are gonna go in our pot. And oh, we do need to cut them up. So let me use um, a knife just to kind of get them cut up. It can be a little bit more, I'll go crosswise too, just to make sure that it's not too much. So there you go. Those are the noodles. Let me put those over near where we're going to be cooking. And let's get the rest of this done. Okay, here we go. We're gonna use the manual food processor. And if you've seen me before, you know I love my manual food processor. And what I love about it is it's really got an easy mechanism. I guess you could look at my face. <laughs> Hello. Um, great, easy mechanism to use. And this, we're just going to make that pad thai sauce. Um, it's got a three cup capacity. I love how it's got three blades and they're all curved to move the food back toward the center. And also um, at three different levels so that it mixes the food. So it's not just for like chopping onions or one single uh, vegetable, you can make things with it. Like we're gonna make a sauce and you can do pesto, you could do um, a salsa, uh, guacamole, kind of anything that you would normally have to mix and things that need to be chopped can all be done together, which is kind of nice. Let's see what we got. I love how long the noodles are. Oh yeah, those are great. I mean. <laughs> And you know, you don't have to cut them, but I think it makes it easier to manage them a little bit. I wouldn't cut them like for, if I was doing like a composed salad with like the beets, like I was saying, and maybe some um, beets and uh, carrots would be beautiful together too. Um, I wouldn't, I would just make like a little basket of them and have like three separate ones on the plate. A little bit of dressing, how pretty, very festive. <laughs> okay, thank you, Janet. Um, okay, so you guys, Let's see, um, okay. Oh, I wanted to show you, whoops, how to do the, um, how to do the ginger. And I went ahead and took my, my uh, cutting board away and I need it. Okay, so the ginger, now interesting, I usually use, so I use my microplane grater and these are on back order right now. So if you want one, you have to wait until like I think mid-December, maybe January, I'm not sure. Um, I always, I always um, peel and cut my ginger and I freeze it because I don't use enough ginger all the time 
for it to uh, need to have a, you know, to have a, um, a fresh one all the time. So it's fresh enough, especially because you're cooking with it. So I'm going to put them, and there's a little food holder that I can attach, put it inside the food holder. And then we're just going to, I don't know if you can see the ginger coming out. But it comes out pretty easily. Now, this is a little less frozen than it was before because I took it out early. Usually I use it for, I freeze it and I, it comes out just like um, snow. So there's a little bit on the back of this. And then there's a big pile of it here, which I hope you can see. Um, and then I'm going to put that in, let's see, combine all the ingredients. Okay, so we've got ginger going in there. And let's get all of this. And then we've got some, um, here's the ginger. Hold on, let me just concentrate on that. Okay, a half a cup of smooth almond butter, cashew butter, or peanut butter. Now, I make my own in the um, cookie. Lies. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, okay, so I forgot to turn off the, um, I forgot to put it on airplane mode. Okay, so I'm using the, um, the measure all cup. This is the one cup one, there's a two cup one, and there's a little mini one. I've got it open to a half a cup, and I put in what's left of our cashew butter that I made a while ago. I wanted to use that up. I could use my homemade peanut butter too, or almond butter, whatever you've got. So that's going to go in and then we're going to add some other ingredients. So let me turn this down so you can see. And it's going to go in. I'm just going to hold my hand over the top here. So, okay. And that was pretty easy. It's all in there. Okay. So that's the, pe the uh, nut butter. And then we need a quarter cup of water. So the nice thing about the measure all cup, I just turn it over and I'll pour some water up to, up to the quarter cup. I'll be right back. Hold on. Okay. Oh, that's a third of a cup. Okay. So about a quarter cup going in. Then we also need um, some lime juice. And what I do with my knife. Okay. Remember, I'm pampered, not perfect, you guys. Okay. <laughs> Here's my um, Santoku knife, the five inch Santoku. I love this knife. And I don't know if you guys know this or if you have watched me in the past, you might have heard this, but each lime is about, um, you get about a tablespoon of, um, of juice from it. So check this out. I've got the little easy read measuring cup and I'm just gonna use the um, citrus press Oh, actually, it's each lime half, I should have said, is about a half of, uh, a tablespoon of juice. This is a little bit more, but that's okay. It'll be a little thinner. I don't mind that. It'll have good, better coverage. So we've got a tablespoon of fresh lime juice. A tablespoon of soy sauce has to go in there. Now, we're gluten-free for the most part, especially in cooking anyways, uh, for my family. So um, I, I use the tamari sauce, which doesn't have gluten in it instead of soy sauce, but it is, you know, a gluten-free sauce, soy sauce. So that's going in there. And then we need a half a teaspoon, tablespoon of honey. So I like to use my little petite measure all cup for things that are sticky. This is where it excels. So I'm just going to pour my honey in there. I've opened it up already to uh, half a tablespoon. It, it opens to a tablespoon normally, or it has a tablespoon. Ugh. So let's see. Oh, is that half a teaspoon or half a tablespoon? Oh, it's half a tablespoon. Okay. Whoops. My mistake. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, no, that's about right. Yep. Half a tablespoon. So it's a little, a little uh, three tablespoons to a um, three, excuse me, teaspoons to a tablespoon. So it's about two, one and a half to two teaspoons of honey. So that worked out pretty quickly, pretty good. Um, and then we want some toasted sesame oil and that's a half a teaspoon. So with that, I really can't get that exact. 
Um, so I'm gonna use one of my little measuring spoons. And I got some toasted sesame oil. Mm, and this really is what gives Pad Thai such great flavor and scent. And I'm really glad that I don't have COVID with uh, loss of smell right now because that smells really good. <laughs> Let's see. Cashew butter is delicious. Oh, thank you, Mitch. That's my husband. Thank you so much. He likes the cashew butter. I'll have to make some more. We're running low on cashew butter and peanut butter. Okay. And then we want a garlic clove. So this has some a lot of ingredients in it, but it's not that hard to um, kind of... So remember with, the, with the, the garlic press, you do not need to uh, peel it. Just put the garlic in and press it in. And you know, this is going to be a little bit more pungent because I'm not slicing it. Garlic uh, tends to be a little more pungent because you're releasing the um, juices. Oh, look at the garlic gods are with me. It came out pretty well. Yay. Okay, we got that. And I think that is, oh, some red pepper flakes. Here we go. Um, it says like a half a teaspoon. So that's about the same amount I got here. Of the, maybe a little less. I don't like it too hot. The rest of my family is, they like it hot. So, but I'm eating this, so <laughs> not too hot. All right. And then all we need to do is put the top on and swish it around. I think I'm going to Put this in a couple different clumps so that it, it uh, gets mixed a little bit. Um, just so you know, there's like a little, um, I don't know what you call it, little thing that sticks out. And there's an, a depression in the um, blade. So this just fits in. It doesn't screw on, so you can move it. And I move it around because sometimes I like to do, like to pump it with my left hand and sometimes with my right. And then all we're doing is just quickly, I like to do a quicker motion. I think it helps it um, mix faster. Let's see how it looks. Almost, almost all mixed up. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna show you in just a second. I don't want this to drip all over the place. And, Oh, you can see it's still a little, little lumpy. So we'll do a little bit more. I want it to be a little bit smoother. And we can scrape down the sides as we need to, just to make sure that it's all good. That looks really good, you guys. What do you think? Looking pretty good? Yeah, okay. Um, okay, I'm going to take you over to the other side while we cook but I gotta get my hands fried off a little bit. And it's, um, it's actually longer than I expected. So we might cut it off here, but I will, sh I will tell you what I'm gonna do, okay? Um, hi, Vicki, you make things look easy. You want the Pad Thai sauce recipe. Okay, I will definitely post that after here. Hi. Okay, so I I'm not gonna actually do the cooking, but I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. So first of all, I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, cook a, it calls her red pepper, so I've got an orange pepper, which is fine. Um, it's still sweet and tasty. And then um, it also calls for broccoli, but I only have frozen and, and we had it last night for dinner. So um, I'm gonna add spinach at the end. So it's very forgiving. I mean, this recipe is kind of like, it's like a stir fry and instead of like soy sauce, I'm using the Pad Thai sauce. So here is the um, quick slice. I'm gonna use this to make thin slices and you can see the slice size and it's about um, a quarter of an inch uh, out, of the, out of this, the um, red, uh, yellow bell pepper. And then I'm also going to uh, use the stir fry pan, the wok, and I'm going to heat, this, heat up some oil. I'm going to scramble a couple of eggs because you know, pot thai usually has eggs in it, right? Uh, scrambled eggs in it. And then I'm going to also cook some shrimp in there. And then I'll, I'll saute the vegetable, uh, the, um, the pepper, and then I'll add the uh, squash. I'll cover it because it needs to really essentially steam. And then I'll add this, I'll add everything in, the back, back in, I'll add the um, shrimp back in, and I'll add the egg back in and the spinach. 
and the sauce and we'll put it all together. So that's what I'm going to be doing, but I feel like if I do that, it's gonna be another maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and I don't wanna keep you guys that long. So you'll have to see the picture when we're done, or maybe I'll film it and I'll po post that underneath if I can do that. All right, so thank you so much for joining me. It's lovely to see everybody. Vicki, thank you for joining, and thank you, um, Margaret, for joining, and Janet for joining, and Mitch. And it's lovely to see you all, and I hope you'll come back next week when we have another something. Um, what I did want to tell you, yes, I, I think I told you already, but I don't remember. This is one of the um, host specials next month, so if you want to schedule a fun cooking party on Facebook. Um, you can get that at 60% off and that's a really good deal. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining me. Have a wonderful evening. We'll see you next time. Bye. It's Sarah Stovetop signing off. Bye.